third um, Metu Talks Architectural History uh, series. Uh, it's very good to see you all again and within this very extraordinary circumstances. Thank you for joining us for this evening's lecture. Uh, today, uh, we have two very uh, distinguished uh, speakers, um, Selin Küçük and Tolga Uyar. Let me do a very short introduction for those of you who are not really familiar with their work. Uh, Selin Küçük is an architect and uh, she has a you know, BARC and uh, MARC degrees from uh, ITU, uh, Istanbul Technical University Department of Architecture. And she is working on the field with Tolga Uyar, who is an associate professor of art, art history. Uh, Tolga Uyar, please correct me if I'm, I do a mistake on this. But uh, she, um, he, is, um, he has degrees and then PhDs from the uh, Sorbonne University uh, and from France. And she's, uh, he is the expert on the um, uh, architecture Byzantine architecture in Cappadocia. He has um, articles and um, published in uh, multiple journals, uh, especially I think the 13th century wall paintings of Cappadocia. And today we are very lucky, uh, also from my personal interest, that they will be uh, presenting an ongoing field research to us. This is the, as far as I know, the original material. They are now. Um, uh, following an ongoing project on the field. So um, thank you for, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. And the floor is yours. Thank you for this wonderful uh, introduction. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us on this uh, Made to Talks Architectural History online event. Also, we'd like to thank the organizers of this meeting for inviting us. Uh, we are here today to present the uh, preliminary results of our field work um, carried out last summer during the months of August and September in the ancient city of Mokisos in Western Cappadocia. Um, first, uh, I'd like to set a framework on the geography, history, and the identification of the settlement and give an overview uh, of the urban tissue. Then my colleague Selin uh, will take the floor and talk about the habitation quarters. Uh, she will present an initial assessment of our architectural survey based on respective case studies. And finally, I will try to deal with the broader historical context of the secular architecture in Mokisos within uh, uh, Byzantine Anatolia and further. Um, I'd like to remind you uh, once again that today's lecture aims to present a work in progress without necessarily uh, definitive uh, conclusions. Um, the archaeological remains known uh, locally as Viranchihi or uh, Uranshar, ruins, ruined city, are located on the northwestern slopes of Hasanda about uh, 30 kilometers south of the regional capital of Aksaray. Um, I don't know if you uh, are able to see my cursor. Yes. So we're here, Helvadere, um, not very far from Aksaray. Um, hidden in the upland valley about the small town of Helvadere, the ruins mainly consist of houses uh, crudely built of rough basalt blocks, as well as mausolea, churches and cisterns, neatly constructed of ashla. Despite its designation as a ruined city, the settlement is currently the largest and most well-preserved Eastern Roman town in the historical region of Cappadocia. Um, 19th century Western travelers and early 20th century archeologists and philologists at first introduced the ruins of Viranche here to the academic world through their travel accounts and research reports. Initially, the settlement um, uh, was associated with the Hellenistic fortress of Nora or uh, Neroosos, um, well, a well-known um, uh, 
castle um, in the uh, historical sources of antiquity. Um, while the toponym of Nora from the remote past is still nowadays linked to the site of Viranshi here. For example, there's a shopping mall uh, in Aksaray called Nora. Um, uh, the speculative localization has not been accepted in the scientific world. The most uh, plausible identification of the ruins as the Byzantine city of Mokisos has prevailed from the late 1930s uh, to nowadays uh, and is based on the account of the sixth century Byzantine chronicler Procopius, who writes, I quote, there was a certain fortress in Cappadocia, Mokisos by name, situated on level ground, but it had sunk into such a state of disrepair that part of it had fallen down and the rest was on the point of doing so. All this, the emperor Justinian pulled down and he built a very strong wall to the west of da 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 da, -da. So we have a, a detailed account of the uh, kind of Refoundation of uh, of the town by Procopius. Um, <clears throat> well, other primary sources also describe the religious signific significance of the town under Justinian. Mokisos uh, became the seat of an archbishopric and ecclesiastical capital uh, of the province of Cappadocia Tercia. Uh, which you don't see on this map because this map uh, relates to the administrative um, division of, of Asia Minor under, under Justinian, but not ecclesiastical, but well, there was an um, under division uh, within the Cappadocia Secunda. Uh, so um, it became uh, the ecclesiastical capital of uh, the Cappadocia Secunda um, um, by taking the name Cappadocia Tercia. Um, no archaeological evidence of public buildings, uh, uh, baths or hospices, or the strong city wall mentioned by Procopius are identifi uh, identifiable on the ground. Uh, however, other urbanistic and architectural uh, characteristics of the present settlement support its identification with Mokisos and accord with sixth century date and historical context. Mokisos has been already subject of an extensive field survey followed by a publication by Albrecht Berger in mid nineties. As the new survey team today, we have uh, both literally fortunate at having um, Berger's book length essay published in Istanbul for the A in uh, 98, uh, and of course some other shorter notes of him about sixth century settlement uh, in Miranchi. Even today, with all the technological advances we have at our disposal, it is difficult to add something new to Berger's excellent analysis of the settlement. Uh, I was hoping he would join us uh, today, but he's not here. Um, and of course, his conclusions without further archaeological investigation. Um, this is why we are starting from the summer onwards uh, and on the approved, approved permit request of the Ministry of Culture Service, Service of Antiquities, an excavation and a broader settlement archaeology project in the field. Uh, besides traditional excavation methods, our aim is also to employ other digital modeling and interpreting settlement patterns through the uh, wave shield analysis, spatial statistics tools such as arches, where the positioning of the monuments hinterland are evaluated relative to the landscape and other broader landscape features um, of the city's hinterland zone. I mean, the whole uh, Hasanda area in connection with, uh, with the town, well, hopefully. Um, so let me, um, um, <clears throat> let me give you an overview um, uh, of um, a topographical overview of the settlement. Um, well, 
as I just uh, mentioned, um, the city is settled in an upland valley, which is defined uh, <clears throat> a parasitic volcano crater of Hasanda. So um, it looks like a um, bowl, um, like a natural bowl. Uh, so the valley is aligned in north-south direction, as you see here. This is our um, um, topographical um, <clears throat> um, plan. Uh, I mean, our map, our mapping, our digital mapping of the last summer. And this is from Google Map. Um, so um, <clears throat> south north, uh, about uh, one kilometer long and uh, 200 meter wide at the northern end, uh, another rather shorter valley, about um, 300 uh, meter long uh, branch of to west. So this is west east. Um, to the east and west, uh, so here and here, steep hills of about uh, 1500 meters. Uh, so creates a um, sort of natural depression in the center, uh, whose bottom is at an elevation of nearly um, 1400 meters. So there's almost in at certain points, 100 meters of uh, difference uh, between the, the bottom of, of the valley and the surrounding uh, um, <clears throat> hills. Um, um, so to the south, there is a uh, dense uh, forest here. Um, and we suppose this was the case in, in sixth century as well. Um, <clears throat> um, the, um, the ancient city was accessible uh, through uh, the antique road uh, entering uh, the city from west and uh, exiting from uh, east. But uh, from 19th century onwards, uh, this um, rather um, shortcut entrance has been used uh, as we know from the accounts of the Greeks uh, uh, of Helvadere, in 19th century Greeks of, of Helvadere. All in all, uh, the ruins spread over an area of around uh, <clears throat> um, 700 hectares, hectare, but become denser on the slopes facing the, the center. So it's not uh, homogeneous. Um, I can say that um, <clears throat> the real dense urban tissue covers an area of about 50 hectare, um, over 170 hectares. So it's 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 a huge city. Uh, and interesting. Let me show you this video uh, with its position uh, within a natural bowl, as I as I just mentioned. Mokisos was almost invisible in the highlands from a distance, except the Acropolis and its fortress to the northwest and. The lack of uh, intervisibility from sites nearby is really remarkable. I mean, it, it's it's really a hidden hidden town um, in sixth century. Um, well, um, the town has a dense urban environment comprising about, uh, according to Berger. Uh, 1,000 houses. We haven't uh, counted them all yet. <laughs> Hoping to uh, doing so um, starting from next uh, summer. Uh, roughly built with local stone and covered with a flat roof or partially vaulted, to which we will return shortly because this is the main topic of our um, <clears throat> talk today. More than 30 monumental pag pagan tombs, Roman tombs, which belong to an earlier Roman necropolis that have subsisted amid the, vest the vestige of the sixth century settlement. So most of these um, <clears throat> neat uh, constructions are uh, integrated uh, within the sixth century urban tissue. A fortified acropolis to the Northwest Hill containing likely a military garrison buildings. 
a heavily damaged ecclesiastical complex in the center of the site. This is important because Mokisos was a, a bishopric, a, an archbishopric. So, so the, the archbishop was residing in the town. So it must have uh, um, um, a bishop palace as uh, we know from um, Anatolian archeologists, uh, I mean, from other um, Justinian town or let's say uh, late antique towns in, in, in Turkey. Um, and several other uh, smaller churches uh, seem uh, attached to this central uh, complex. Uh, two other relatively well-preserved churches on the western slopes of the valley, locally known as Kemerli Kilise and Kara Kilise, and more than 25 other smaller churches all around the town. All these buildings, uh, presumably built in the, uh, in the sixth um, century, um, covering the whole sixth century, and perhaps um, at the very beginning of the seventh century, from that peri period onwards, the building activity in the town ceased and it seems Mokisos had no social, political or religious importance in later centuries. Only occasional repairs, possibly during 10th and 11th centuries are visible in a small number of churches like in Karakilise. And two middle, middle Byzantine monasteries outside the site appear to have been built with spolia or reused materials that that are coming from, from Okisos. So uh, this, is an, um, <clears throat> uh, this is also a plan we, uh, we made uh, last summer. Um, and uh, it shows um, in the orange um, sections, um, um, the most dist distinctive aspect of, of uh, the town that is, it's secular residential architecture. So these are uh, the residential areas. It was very densely populated town uh, for a sixth century uh, city in the middle of, uh, I would say, uh, nowhere in, in Anatolia. Uh, and uh, these are obvious reminders of the dynamic uh, social and economic life in the settlement, as well as in the broader late antique uh, and early medieval periods in, in Cappadocia. That is when I say er, uh, late antique, early medieval in Cappadocia from fourth to, to beginning of seventh centuries. Now I leave the floor to my colleague uh, Selin, uh, who was in charge uh, of documenting all, all this uh, architectural data evidence. So she will give us a detail overview of the secular residential architecture. Um, let me exit my... Thank you, Hojan. Um, just a second. Okay. Is my screen clearly seen now? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, thanks for the invitation. Hope you enjoy our talk on civil architecture of Moxos. Uh, I will briefly talk about our fieldwork in 2020 in Moxos. We carried out mapping and architectural documentation uh, during last season. Since it was the first year of scientific survey, an infrastructure for the excavation would be needed. We designed control points, produced and implemented them in 10 strategic points, had high precision static survey and leveling to get below centimeter precision coordinates. To generate a base map, we both use aerial and terrestrial surveying methods, implemented temporary control points, by using ArgoField real-time documentation system that we uh, designed and developed, attached to GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite, Satellite System, got the air coordinate data, planned the flight route and got aerial images, post-processed images with coordinate data, 
Thus, we get 3D point cloud generated 3D surface model of the site and base map with one meter contour lines. I would like to introduce you and thank Field Tech team who contributed in surveying and digitizing process of the project. The team is consisted of architects, urban planners, surveyors, and art historians. We are drawing stone plans, schematic plans, and other architectural documentation uh, of Mokiso's ancient settlement. After this short brief, I will continue with civil architecture in Mokiso's. According to initial analysis, we think there are three different typologies are existed in Mokiso's civil architecture. They are three traditional houses, monumental buildings, and local vernacular architecture. I utilized from my own experience and early research for categorizing them. I will also try to enlighten the terms in related sections. In this presentation, I will give information about location, building form, structural system, roof system, openings, and courtyards of each type. I would like to start with most common type, which scattered in whole settlement, traditional houses. These buildings have tetragonal or polygonal plants. They mostly have single cell. Sometimes we encounter with a division wall in interior. The building units both can be self-standing or attached. Even there is no remain of roof, we believe that they were covered with a terrace roof. Building height of this uh, type is up to for five meters, uh, which is unusual for modern world. <laughs> Building technique is polygonal uh, dry masonry wall. Uh, they have entrances with reasonable dimensions. Uh, they are big, like two people can easily enter. Some of them have windows. Buildings are not oriented according to settlements characteristics, not climate. Uh, their entrances uh, and windows are in different directions. Uh, it says us that uh, the entrances are not always at south or uh, windows are not always looking to the where sun comes. <laughs> They might have more than one wall as a retaining wall in slopes of the hills. These retaining walls continue and exist artificial terraces with the same building system. The retaining walls do not only exist an artificial terrace, but also exist building blocks and roads. Cases from the traditional type will be shown in this presentation are located in 3D model of the site. As you can see, they are scattered in whole sites, bottom of the valley, hillsides, hilltops, everywhere. Thus, geographical characteristic was not a boundary to build this type of building. To make you imagine a construction of the remains, I positioned some ghost boxes on the exact locations uh, of the traditional houses. Let's look at them slightly distant and repeat the characteristics. They are scattered, self-standing or attached, tetragonal or polygonal plants, single or double cells in a unit. Neighbor building blocks may define a road in between. The roads attached to each other net the settlement and reach out to almost all single buildings. Uh, as you know, there are not only civil architecture in Mokisos, there are also religious buildings, big churches, as uh, Tolga Hoja mentioned. Uh, these roads also um, attach other buildings uh, with this kind of buildings. There is another building unit with two tiny windows in west facade. The buildings have doors in reasonable dimensions, as I uh, mentioned before. Here we put Sarhat, who is 180 centimeter tall to give a scale. <laughs> Architecture of some uh, buildings does not provide full vision of the space, as in the case uh, from the entrance. Uh, in this building entrance, uh, 
this building's entrance is in the corner. In these cases, you can see there's a circular plan element uh, attached to or close to building's interior walls. It may be a fireplace or a workshop. Uh, since there wasn't any excavation, we do not know for what purposes these components added to the buildings. Uh, hope this year or next years we are going to understand uh, why these circular elements were attached to these buildings. The wall technique seems simple, but it is actually very clever. In polygonal technique, each stone is surrounded by other stone blocks like daisy leaves. That means if you miss any stone in the middle of the wall, it won't be destroyed. Uh, you can see in the picture on right bottom, there's a missing stone, but uh, the wall is still stands. Uh, it also explains us how these buildings uh, could stand for thousands of years. There is no clue for now, but stairs might be used in buildings to link lower level to upper levels. In this picture, we see a white ramp-like element attached to interior retaining wall of a unit. Uh, even today, we use it to reach inside of the space from upper level. There's a hybrid structure. Different stages can easily be seen from its plan and facade. There is a vault structure in the middle, which was built in Roman period as a grave. It is surrounded by a few buildings and linked to at, uh, attached units uh, afterwards. The unit at left uh, side has two doors, as you can see in the plan. This tells us that there, were, there would be a division wall uh, in this unit in previous time, while it's repaired and reused one of the doors is cancelled uh, at the photo down right. Uh, and the division wall is removed. Spaces are reunited and widened. Additionally, separated units are connected to this uh, complex with modern walls constructed by village people. Um, this valley uh, is used by village people uh, in um, closer times. Another type is monumental buildings situated in valley plains. Uh, even they also have tetragonal or polygonal plans. Respect to their uniform and symmetrical plans and wall technique, we think these buildings reflect different characteristics from traditional ones. Additionally, these types are self-standing buildings not attached to uh, each other has double row thick walls. By the way, all these monumental buildings are close to the center where the main church is located. This argument is also make us think that these buildings might be used by public, administrative or ecclesiastical authorities. The regular masonry walls are constructed with worked stones in almost equal sizes. Roof of these monumental buildings is unknown. However, according to their character, they may have a pitched roof instead of terrace roof. The third and last building type is unlikely organic. Uh, actually, these organic forms remind us local vernacular architecture as a reflection of established culture rather than a civilization. <clears throat> The building units have circular, elliptical, or softened edge polygonal plant cells linked to each other with doors or arcs. A cistern may be attached to a building complex. Both cistern and living units are enclosed with dome or vault. Living units have dry masonry walls, while cisterns are mortared. Most of the buildings have courtyards. The houses are situated uh, in valley plains or foothills, not in all of the uh, settlement. There is one of the uh, cases and its uh, section. Uh, the section is not scaled, it was just field sketch. 
uh, as you see uh, in the section, there are uh, arches or walls uh, which connects to the spaces to each other, and uh, they are mostly multi-cell uh, buildings. The picture shows remains of two attached dome units. There is an arc in between. Uh, in this slide, pink reflects early construction, while orange is modern. The bottom of the valley is used by modern people as stockyards and barns. Uh, thus, existing buildings are repaired and reused. However, modern walls sometimes constructed on substructure of early walls. There's another example. Uh, there's another example with courtyard and um, three regular cells. There is one more, a picture of the courtyard is also seen. There is uh, one more case. Uh, here you can see the section. There's a cistern uh, attached to building. Number three is a cistern, uh, which is in a lower level than living units. Living units are attached to each other uh, with doors or arcs. Uh, there's a court courtyard uh, on west. Another one. This diagram is generated from my master thesis uh, called Analysis of Tribal Huts According to nat Local Natural Pro Properties. The diagram shows direct and indirect relation of climate, land, and local material with building form and structural system. Apart from local natural properties, living style is also directly affected on uh, building form. According to diagram, geographical location is not affected on architecture. Even there is no cultural relationship, if related properties are similar, communities would build in the same way all over the world. This example from South Africa is quite similar to our last archetype. Dry masonry dome structures attached to each other has a courtyard. Uh, there are more examples from Europe and Asia too. Uh, this is from uh, France as well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. My uh, presentation is finished. And I would like to thank Paul Hoja uh, as well uh, to give me this chance. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Sevin Hanım, maybe if you can stop sharing. Didn't I? Or, uh, we are going back to Tolga Hoca? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, nice. Sorry, Tolga Hoca, buyurun lütfen. Mikrofonunuzu... Hocam mikrofonunuz kapalı. Mute'sunuz hala ama. Oldu. Oldu değil mi? Oldu. Hı -hı. Tamam. Um, so, um, uh, of course, uh, the settlement um, at Viranshair is not unique in its residential architecture. Uh, Lycia, Cilicia, Lycaonia, Syria, and other regions preserve examples too. However, the closest comparison with Mokissos in terms of construction technique may be the settlements in Dağören and Gölören in uh, uh, in Binbir Kilise in, uh, in Kara, uh, Karada, 
that can be dated to the same period and which uh, share the characteristics of the seventh century um, refuge settlements, which I uh, return shortly. Um, um, so uh, when Justinian fortified the, the frontiers of the empire in the sixth century, uh, the frontier lay much farther to east, uh, like here up to Syria. Uh, so well beyond Cappadocia, but with the Persian Wars on the early seventh century and subsequent expansion uh, by the uh, Arab uh, Caliphate, Cappadocia became threatened. The first Arab incursions came in 641, as you know, the middle of the seventh century. Um, so by uh, circa uh, six, uh, 660, the uh, frontier was uh, established in Cilicia along the Taurus. Um, <clears throat> so um, as uh, Albrecht Berger already uh, pointed out, the creation of the settlements in, in uh, in Binbir Kilise, uh, much as in Mokisos uh, in Miranshir, may be the consequence of the immigration phenomena created by the Islamic conquests. Small or middle sized agrarian villages or towns must have been evacuated permanently, creating thus a need for larger um, and denser protected built environments. Unsurprisingly, these so-called immigrant towns must have been constructed uh, relatively quickly. Um, still, uh, this could only partially explain rough and imprecise uh, construction in Viran technique in Viranche here. The main construction material uh, is uh, the, the, this uh, local uh, um, basalt uh, stone which was used without further effort, uh, effort to be co quarried. Um, so uh, you don't really need it because these are um, natural blocks uh, lying around. Um, as we compare it to that of Bimbir Kilise or other examples in Asia Minor or in broader uh, Eastern Mediterranean, so here's uh, to a case which was directly modeled in my mind by the physical environment and the geology of the construction site. Uh, and the only true visual parallel I was able to find is some crude church construction in Southern Greece in Mani. Uh, but these are later constructions. Um, I mean, slightly later constructions because uh, the uh, uh, the historical context is, um, is completely different. Uh, well, to conclude, uh, other newly built cities in sixth century by Justinian, uh, such as uh, <clears throat> Justiniana Prima in, uh, in the Balkans, uh, co uh, could be considered part of the classical Hellenistic and Roman urban tradition since they were planned by architects and engineers in, from Constantinople, according to a basic conceptual model, which was locally adapted to the specific needs of each settlement. Mokisos stands in dramatic contrast to Justinus' contemporaneous foundations in the Balkans and in Anatolia, as there is no evidence for a pre-existent grid uh, street layout, the urban planning of Mokisos is not comparable to that of these towns. It's, it's um, entirely organic. Uh, the peculiar landscape and desire for defensibility seem to determine the urban structure of the town and circled with natural fortifications. In other words, the hills, the surrounding hills. For the ecclesiastical architecture, uh, Viranchir seems to present characteristics of local Anatolian building traditions um, <clears throat> and regional uh, stone ma masonry, horseshoe arches and polygonal apses. Uh, so uh, this uh, pushes me uh, to think uh, in terms of secular arch architecture 
why not uh, the peculiar archaic forms uh, and techniques of constructions may uh, uh, wouldn't be also suggest it was locally planned by regional builders instead of real architects and engineers. It also stands as a good example of, of the dramatic changes in Roman urbanism through fourth and fifth centuries. Later Byzantine towns will follow this pattern, like this organic evolution or development. Um, nevertheless, the population density and the extensiveness of residential zones in Viranshi here seems to be unrivaled elsewhere in, in the Byzantine world, um, around a thousand um, insulaia. I mean, th these are comparable to Roman uh, uh, buildings and need further explanation through extensive archeological investigations. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, why um, are um, project, our archeological project on site. Thank you for, for listening. Should I unshare my uh, screen or I just leave it? Um, yes, if you, if you could maybe stop sharing, we can. Okay. Um, if needed, we can refer back to the images. Yeah. Uh, but for the questions, I usually, and, um, Okay. And we will see everyone's face as far as we can. So uh, thank you so much. I, I think this is a um, fascinating presentation, early presentation of the site. Uh, it's a very interesting site. Thank you for the work and sharing with us. Um, okay, I, I think I will, I will first um, leave the floor to the audience and the questions. I think there must have um, so if, uh, if, you know, as usual, uh, I cannot really see everyone, but um, you can either, you know, um, uh, jump in and ask, or I can maybe uh, allow you to. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, the, I must uh, thank, uh, usually we thank the speakers, but in this case, I would like to thank uh, Pelin Hoca because this is absolutely spectacular. I mean, uh, the Pelin Hoca fished you out and uh, brought you to uh, the architectural history uh, talks. Normally in our talks in architectural history, we hear uh, different interpretations, but it is very seldom that we are the ground for sharing absolutely new information and that's what I see uh, here. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. I mean, uh, when we talk about uh, early Byzantine, um, we think of the metropolitan areas, uh, we think of you know, palaces or we think of Cappadocia. And what you have here is uh, a brand new city. I mean, you mentioned that the geologically, I mean, in the sixth century, it was hidden and maybe that's a selection reason for the location. Mm -hmm. But it seems that it was also hidden from the um, scholarly community. I mean, uh, you mentioned, yes, Procopius uh, seems to mention. You mentioned the uh, 1930s. I mean, there was some mention. And then it wasn't until the 1980s when uh, Albrecht you know, Berger uh, you know, uh, ex made an exposition of the site. And I think uh, right now, uh, uh, you have a splendid, you know, opportunity in front of you for uh, recording, for new interpretations, for um, implementing new methodologies, bringing together archaeology, uh, architectural history, and uh, other multidisciplinary fields. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I'm I'm thrilled about about you know your work. One thing I would like to ask is. Um, uh, I mean, these early sites in archaeology are uh, notoriously difficult to date, especially when you're talking about fifth or sixth centuries. Uh, do you have, I mean, you mentioned historical incidents, yes, but uh, do you have any firm basis for dating? I mean, what kind of dating criteria uh, do you use? That's my question. But thank you very much. Uh, um, I thank you, Sunawja, uh, for this um, 
wonderful comment um, for your wonderful comments. Um, well, I guess uh, the church architecture is a solid basis for our uh, dating criteria. Um, the the so-called Kemerli Kilise, um, it's, a, it's a typical uh, sixth century building, uh, which corroborates uh, <clears throat> the historical account of Procopius. Um, uh, but as you, uh, as you rightfully um, um, underlined, um, well, um, in the case of, um, uh, of the secular architecture, um, the chronology is a bit problematic, uh, but uh, we, uh, we hope um, um, coming up with uh, some um, further um, archaeological evidence uh, to create um, a sort of um, um, internal chronology uh, within the site, hopefully. Um, uh, but I guess um, we, um, um, besides the church architecture, there's, uh, there isn't any, any other evidence. Okay, thank you. Uh, good luck. Also, you mentioned uh, that for the um, uh, natural uh, blocks from the site, uh, the, I mean, not uh, cut stone masonry, but natural, you know, blocks. You mentioned uh, some uh, the, the comparisons in, you know, Greece. Well, Ireland is also a good example. I mean, the early ascetic architecture in Ireland, I mean, Okay. Uh, there are some uh, very interesting um, uh, stone you know, structures dated to the seventh century there. I don't know how they date them to the seventh century, but uh, the, the, I mean, the Galarus Oratory, for example, is, is one example. You might find it interesting to uh, use that as a comparison as well. But thank you so much. This is spectacular. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for your reference. It's it's very interesting. I'll 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 take note on. It. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sunoya. And uh, uh, şey, uh, kendi adıma da uh, benim için de çok hoş oldu. Teşekkür ederim hocam. Ben de çok keyifle davet ettim Tolga Bey. Um, any other questions? Ömür Hoca mı görüyorum? Ömür Hoca da unuttu mikrofonu. Sesinizi Unmute. Olmadı. Yanlış yerde. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I also want to thank, want to thank you both of you for this excellent uh, talk. It was very interesting. I had no idea uh, about the vernacular architecture in this area. Now my interest is with materials. Did you say you the, the stone was collected from the area? No quarries, no stone quarries. Ah, uh, you couldn't find it. It's basalt and collected from the area. Well, um, well, except uh, the uh, the ashlar constructions of the the three main churches. Yes. And some others smaller uh, church buildings. Uh, we do not have uh, precisely uh, uh, precisely cut um, stone blocks no. in, in, the, all, in constructions. Yes. All the rest is. Um, the so-called um, volcanic bombs, uh, the uh, these explosions. Uh, uh -huh. um, well, the, the, there's uh, there's no real uh, quarries uh, within or perhaps outside the town. We we might be able to uh, to find something, yes. uh, but there's. Um, up to now, we haven't came across any any quarries, quarries. visible quarries. The stones and the construction somehow reminds me of Hatusha also, and there also they mentioned that the basalt blocks are, uh, were collected from the site. So mm -hmm. there, it's of course much earlier. Hatusha is much earlier, but there might be some topographical connection. Thank you for this. Uh, thank you for this information, Ömer Hocam. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was very, very good, very stimulating. Thank you. Helen Hocam, teşekkürler. Çok iyiydi.
Teşekkür ederiz hocam. Other questions? Bir chat görüyorum. Günar Sağır. So, um, Günar Hanım, are you there? You want to read your comments yourself or? I, this was all I wanted to ask. I am here, but this was all. Thank you very much. Sağ olun hocam. Ee, bir koment var. Ee, onu okuyacağım ama e, belki sesli ben okuyayım o zaman. So Günar Sağır uh, um, says that you know thanks for the presentation. Smakış is a very important area for the early Byzantine period and also the field field conditions are most difficult for research. I think these research results will provide us with very important data for the early Byzantine period. And in addition, there will be a chance to review the results of old researches with new technologies. So, um, so uh, congratulations, and you know everyone is very uh, thankful. And then Sever also um, mentions that the site appears to be very large from the video. And she asks whether which sections of the city are you going to give the priority for the excavations and the surveys for this year, I guess, right? Yes, we will start uh, with the very heart of the city, um, the so-called uh, um, <clears throat> um, um, ecclesiastical complex um, in the center. Uh, well, if uh, indeed uh, this is the cathedral uh, of, and if the surrounding buildings are um the bishopric palace will give us um, plenty of um, plenty of evidence uh, hopefully and so this is why we are planning to start from there okay um so um okay and uh, any other questions i okay Now I have a question. If you um, so, thank you from my point of view as well. My my question is about the um, about the um, special organizations of the whole city. So uh, the, I think Selin Hanım showed us a certain street like uh, alliance. Is that the only one about the network or any any? I mean, the entrance. I mean, the the um the alignment of the topography is very much shaping the whole morphology. It looks like it. It's very much obvious. You know, there is probably a central um, avenue, if mm -hmm. there is. But um, you only uh, have uh, one. Okay, stay on subject. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure, it's fine. My question is about. Okay, uh, we actually had a urban analysis in Mokisos uh, to uh, figure out how uh, people settled there, how was the relationship between geography and buildings, and uh, with buildings to each other as well. Uh, we realized a lot of things. Uh, by this uh, urban analysis. So uh, interdisciplinary workings uh, is really important in that kind of uh, settlements, uh, I think. Uh, we saw that almost all of the settlements are artificially terraced uh, by walls. Uh, and these terrace walls are retaining walls, of course, uh, has the same building technique with uh, traditional buildings Uh, it says us that they uh, were simultaneous uh, buildings. So traditional buildings were built in the same time with the terraces. And Roman tombs uh, are under uh, these terraces. So they are now uh, uncovered or uh, um, their remains can be found because of the uh, illegal excavations um, and uh, these terraces sometimes uh, define roads uh, and also building facades also uh, define uh, roads because they are attached to each other and we see that entrances of these buildings 
are along the road. So uh, that also make me think uh, maybe some of the buildings were not used for civil purposes, maybe uh, trade uh, atelier workshops and that, that kind of purpose uh, are also possible uh, instead of uh, civil structures. Uh, but architecturally, there's no difference uh, between others. So uh, you are right, uh, that there's a net uh, in all of the settlement uh, with roads. Uh, these roads uh, relates whole buildings to each other, especially the main religious buildings, even they are uh, behind a, a hill, a single road goes until uh, that building. Mm -hmm. so, you. so you mentioned, yeah. I guess, there are two monasteries in the internet of the city, right? Uh, yes, these are two monasteries uh, uh, which are not included in our um, documentation yet. Uh, but uh, some of the um, um, some of the churches uh, um, could also uh, be uh, monastic um, um, monastic oh. uh, buildings as well. I mean, I'm talking about the city itself within the city. Um, so this is why an excavation is also very important. Um, well, city city monasteries is a well known phenomenon, as you know. Oh. Very interesting. It's a very, very nice puzzle, no? Uh, e, Fatma hocamı görüyorum. Gül Merhaba, iyi akşamlar. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, Selin Küçük and Tolga Uyar for this excellent uh, presentation. Sesim geliyor galiba değil mi? Geliyor, geliyor. Uh, I have a question about these uh, circular um, structures that you have discovered. Uh, you mentioned organic circular structures and you compared this uh, with some um, other uh, examples uh, not from the regional area I, I think but I think th these were kind of uh, kilns fireplaces uh, do you have any uh, preliminary suggestion for these uh, circular installations are these uh, part of uh, workshops that you have just mentioned uh, or do you have any uh, analogies, uh, local analogies for these uh, circular structures. Thank you. Uh, thank um, you very much, Fatma Hocam. Tolga Hocam, siz mi cevaplarsınız? Go ahead and I'll, I'll take the... Uh... Uh, to, to make it clear, uh, do you mean uh, the circular structures inside traditional buildings, like in uh, polygonal or tetragonal wall, uh, plan buildings, or organic form? structure okay the one that you mentioned as organic vernacular ones yes as ver vernacular yes okay. uh the vernacular structures uh, <laughs> uh i called them local vernacular because they are uh, very harmonically uh interacted with the geography and uh each other, there's a re really good harmony uh, in between them and with the uh, geography. Uh, and also their form are not perfect. It's all organic. Uh, it's like compounds, tribal uh, compounds uh, in Africa uh, or other continents. Uh, and the, their sizes uh, are changing. Um, they have all local material and uh, they, their uh, working style, uh, building style is completely different from traditional ones. They have smaller uh, stone blocks than traditional ones. Their ceiling heights uh, are lower, lower. Um, and uh, their planning are completely organic, but uh, traditional ones uh, needs more workforce. So I thought these uh, organic forms, vernacular architecture uh, must be 
built by settled people in there uh, for more uh, years, like thousands of years maybe, but other type, traditional type are products of a civilization. So uh, they might be built by Byzantine, but the organic ones, vernacular ones uh, are built by their settlers, their uh, local people. Uh, it's all my thought, actually. I don't know what Tolga Hoja says about it. Okay, I uh, thank you. Uh, of course, this uh, this interpretation goes well beyond the Byzantine context. <laughs> I mean, uh, it goes very deep uh, uh, further back. Uh, well, um, the two extremes. Uh, um, on one side, we have uh, the city, um, the, the city's toponym, Mokisos, is, it's, is not a Greek name. Uh, it's a Helen, Hellenized form of a local name. Uh, and it, it is probably goes back to, uh, well, Hittite or whatever. Um, we have, uh, this phenomenon is very common in Cappadocia. So, um, <laughs> uh, so. And it, the other extreme, uh, we have uh, the so-called Tandır um, Tandır Evleri tradition in the late uh, Anatolia, or the pigeon houses in um, in Kayseri. These are wonderful buildings, uh, which uses pretty much the same uh, construction technique. Um, well, this is. Uh, uh, what I what I told, and uh, we we call these uh, vernacular uh, structures. We like to call them um, Star Wars uh, houses. You know, in Star Wars series, uh, well, you go in different planets where you have this kind of. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dilan. Uh, any other questions? Biraz önce birini daha görmüştüm galiba ama. Hocam Gözde Demir elini kaldırdı. Ah, evet. Lütfen buyurun. Merhaba. Uh, I would like to ask about cluster using of houses. Is there any evidence of cluster using on the other houses on the side? So uh, we cannot really hear you, um, Gözü. Can you repeat? Um, uh, is there any of using on the other uh, walls? I'm afraid I will ask you to write, if you don't mind, your question. Um, because I think it's from the connection. Um, we cannot really hear you well. So back here on the backlog, and I might ask one more question about the um, um, the working. Uh, just out of curiosity, I mean, the, the landscape is not really helping you, probably, right? While you were having these, you know, uh, the, the ArcGIS and these the, 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 the stationary points and etc. And as far as I understand, maybe I might be wrong, but you got the the whole base map already, right? And now it looks like you will be um, concentrating on. So, you, was it um, how hard was it? I mean, to get the whole base map. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, topography is. Yeah, and this is actually our job professionally. Uh, we are uh, providing service to architectural survey and excavations for generating base map and uh, architectural documentation. Tolga Hoca was one of our customers, actually. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so I'm guessing your funding for the excavation is good then, Tolga Hoca. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Up today, yes, but uh, well, who knows tomorrow. Okay, it's good. I mean, it's, it's good to hear. Uh, to answer your question, we generated base map uh, in one month, month 
uh, now we are uh, drawing its stone plants and schematic plants. Uh, I showed some of them in uh, my presentation. The hectare, is, uh, the area is 200 hectares big. It's too much actually, so uh, it's not that easy. We are working uh, a few people on this project, uh, but all of our us are expertized in uh, architecture and archaeological uh, sites. So we will see the results soon. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, it's great because I guess, I mean, in these towns, especially with this, um, you know, the towns they are really sitting on the topography or kind of an embedding on the topography, the uh, 3D modeling and, you know, the model of the site along with the, with the structures will be more helpful to, for any kind of interpretation, I think. Yes, of course. Each material gives us different information. We combine them uh, and we analyze uh, everything with all the information coming from different material. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Selin Hanım. Ha, okay, Gözde Demir has the question. So is there any evidence of plaster using on the inner and outer walls of the houses? No. Okay. No. no. At least, uh, at least um, up to now, um, no. No painting, no inscription, no plaster? No. Yeah, th there's only cisterns uh, mortar attached to uh, houses, but not inside or outside of the houses. Is there any clue about the any water supply system or? Um, well, Celine has some uh, um, uh, crazy ideas about about it, but uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, up to, well, well, yes. Um, um, right now, we 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 don't have any um, any. Um, strong evidence uh, for such a supply, but uh, well, we'll see. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Hojan, we have Selim Karabik with her hand raised. Yes. Selim. Uh, hi, hi, Hojan. Uh, I would like to thank you and Selim for this presentation. Uh, actually, something you said uh, made me wonder if it's ever possible that the churches, all all these um, complexes about the monumental buildings, including churches, they seem to predate the so-called traditional houses. Have you had a chance to make any surveys, field surveys down in the town in Helvedere? Well, um, can yeah. I can I answer, uh, Celine? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Celine. Okay. Well, um, Celine is uh, is very excited about this typology. Uh, I mean, this uh, classification, uh -huh. but we still have to be uh, very careful about this sort of uh, identification as being uh, traditional, vernacular, and monumental. So, um, so we will see uh, with, with the excavation, perhaps uh, we'll have some um, better ideas about, um, um, about the um, chronological relationship between these three types, but these, uh, these three so-called uh, typology is to be further investigated. Uh, before, uh, um, um, before, as it presented to the scholarly world as a as a strong uh, yeah. argument. Uh, I have some pictures of buildings from Helvodere village. Uh, if you would like to see, I can share my scene uh, again. We actually compare the buildings uh, with the uh, buildings inside the Mokisos. But mm -hmm. there is no similarity, uh, actually, uh, about uh, building technique, if you are asking about it. Uh, sure, but what I wonder really is, uh, if Mokisos, where it is now, where you are researching, was mainly a religious site, 
and the town itself was somewhere away and with the Arab raids people had to move up to the religious site because if I am not wrong you said the churches mainly date from the sixth century and the beginning of the seventh but later I mean that's all predating the Arab raids I mean if they took defense there if they took shelter there up was the yeah, that's the that's that's a possibility uh, that's the possibility but uh, the topography um, in my mind uh, I mean the topography looks uh, um, <clears throat> looks an important criteria for mm -hmm. the settlement rather than the religious uh, I guess um, I guess um, not the religious factors, but uh, rather um, topographical. Uh, being further up and being safer. Um, okay. Thank you. Mm. I guess I guess the number of the churches, um, at least. Um, the documented churches, um, well, it's quite, um, it's quite acceptable for a, for a Byzantine town. I mean, there, there's, there isn't much, I mean, it's, it's um, quite normal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, Ojalarım? Uh, dear audience? No? Garba. Okay. Um, so then, um, thank you again for our presenters for presenting this uh, fascinating work, field work, especially and the, for sharing with us their original documentations, which is not really uh, published yet, Dima, if I'm not wrong. So well, it's. Maybe. Uh, we haven't published anything yet. I mean, I, we just published some. Um, um in some popular um press um some just to make mm -hmm. the voice of the project that's all okay. like atlas or um, mm -hmm. archaeology dunyas or things like that so i'm guessing we will be hearing more about mokisos hopefully mm -hmm. yes uh, and uh, all the funding uh, proposals uh, are truly welcome we love you <laughs> Okay, uh, it's good to uh, also uh, for, for dear audience, please consider Tolgo's uh, uh, call for, for, you know, elimizi alıştırmayalım. And uh, thank you again for today's talk. Um, for Tolga Hoca and Selin Hanım, uh, thank you for joining us for this lecture. And for the audience, we will be um, eylemlerimize devam edeceğiz, her zaman söylediğim gibi. Please follow us um, in, in, you know, uh, online uh, social Thank media. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Herkese uh, sağlıklı bir akşam diliyorum. Uh, i̇yi kapanma günleri.